Uh, can I now introduce our final speaker, Spencer Zivchak, uh, President of Liberty Victoria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob, and also to Peter for organising what is a, an enormously important occasion um, because we face, I think, in coming months and years on the basis of this, um, some very, very difficult times. What I want to do in uh, this final paper this evening, uh, given that we have a legal audience, is to reflect from the perspective of the rule of law in Australia State on statements made by leading political figures in this country which relate to the disclosure of the WikiLeaks documents. The logical place to begin is with Julia Gillard's first statement on the matter, uh, and I quote, she said, I absolutely condemn the disclosure of this information on the WikiLeaks website. It is a grossly irresponsible thing to do and an illegal thing to do. Now, it's quite astonishing that the Prime Minister should have delivered that statement at that time with such certitude. It's remarkable for the following reasons. It was a statement that was made in the absence of identifying any law, whether in Australia or in the United States, that might have been broken. There is still in relation to the WikiLeaks disclosure, no law that has been identified as having been broken. It was a statement made without the investigation by the Federal Attorney General's Department on whether any law had been broken. A statement without the investigation commenced by the United, Sta United States Attorney General's Department as to whether any United States law had been broken. It was a statement made in the absence of any charges being made it was made in the absence of Mr Assange having been given any opportunity to respond to any allegation of illegality, including those relating to commission of sexual offences. And a statement made, obviously, in the absence of a, properly, of a trial before a properly constituted court. The effect of this statement was for the PM to declare Mr Assange guilty of a criminal offence, thereby denying him the presumption of innocence, prejudicing his prospects for a fair trial and preempting the outcome of any legal proceedings whether in Australia or the United States. Not bad for a couple of sentences. On the matter of illegality, um, it's worthwhile making <laughs> the following brief observations. Given that the documents disclosed were US State Department documents and given that their disclosure occurred from a server based in Europe, it's highly unlikely that any Australian law will have been broken. In the United States, the principal avenue being pursued is a prosecution under the Espionage Act. As to that, there seems to be some delay and a measure of desperation. The United States Espionage Act was enacted in 1917, towards the end of the First World War. It is now being plundered as a means of prosecuting Mr. Assange for a quintessentially 21st century form of publication. That may prove to be an impossible exercise. In the only relevant case decided in the US uh, as to uh, the leaking of documents and their subsequent publication, the appellate court decided that for a charge of espionage to be made out, it would have to be demonstrated either that the publisher had intended to harm the national security interests of the United States or the national security interests of some other allied country. It'd be very difficult to demonstrate a conscious intention to harm the national security interests of the United States following from the release of the WikiLeaks documents. And there is a further <coughs> hurdle in relation to the Espionage Act, and that is that any um, proceeding in, uh, on the basis of an offence uh, allegedly committed under that Act would uh, bring into, um, uh, would pit one against the other, first, the protection of the public interest in governmental secrecy, against the American Constitution's First Amendment protection of freedom of speech. That is not a battle, I think, 
that the United States government is likely to win. In relation to the alleged sexual offences, uh, I think it's plain that nobody knows went on, what went on in the bedroom on those two nights with those two partners, so it's idle to speculate on the truth or otherwise of what is currently being said. But one can make the following observations. There has been some difficulty and confusion in the Swedish prosecutor's office. First, uh, the warrant uh, to have uh, Julian Assange brought to Sweden for questioning was issued. At the next level, the prosecutor decided that there was insufficient evidence for the warrant um, to be continued. At the next level, that decision was overturned and proceedings for the issue of the warrant uh, were um, recommenced. Even now, four months later, interestingly, Julian Assange has not seen the full brief of evidence against him. I understand that this week will be the first occasion on which he's made fully aware of the evidence that has been in the possession of the Swedish Prosecutor's Office now for some considerable time. And it's also worth noting that the warrant issued is not for Assange to return to Sweden to face charges. No charges have yet been laid. It is for him to answer questions as part of a preliminary investigation as to whether a prosecution should be commenced. In those circumstances, for the Prime Minister even to make any vague reference to illegality in relation to these sexual matters is clearly premature. The Prime Minister has now moderated her position, but not much. She has said that, and again I quote, the foundation of this disclosure is an illegal act. There would not have been any publication unless there had been an illegal act under Australian law. The foundation stone is the illegal act and not the publication. But there is a federal investigation underway to see whether any Australian law has been broken. There are proceedings in relation to sexual offences. And in the end, there is the common sense test of the gross irresponsibility of this action. Here at least we have the proper distinction made between the initial leaking of the documents from within the State Department and their subsequent publication. But the hunt for a convenient law is clearly still on. And I think it again remarkable that in response to a question about the possible illegality of the WikiLeaks disclosures, the Prime Minister chooses to close her remarks by eliding illegality with irresponsibility. Where and how, in law, is a common sense test of irresponsibility to be applied? <laughs> the Attorney General, Robert McClellan, has been equally disappointing. He began his intervention by saying that if Mr Assange had broken the law, he wouldn't be welcome back in Australia. And even if he hadn't broken the law, the attorney said the Commonwealth may consider cancelling his passport. Here again, a person's passport may finally be cancelled only if the relevant legal criteria are met. The final decision is not the Commonwealth's. Next, the attorney made it clear even in the absence of any evident breach of Australian law, that Australia will support any law enforcement action taken by the United States. He said, the United States will be the lead government in this respect, but certainly Australian agencies will provide every assistance. It's the kind of thing an article clerk might say <laughs> when asked by the firm's senior partner to help. <laughs> This raises the question, would Australia assist in the US even if it were to conclude that any investigation or prosecution had little prospect of success? And why are we helping to hunt down Assange on behalf of the US, seemingly in the absence of either a law or substantial evidence that any offence has been committed? The attorney was asked more specifically what laws he thought might have been infringed. His, his answer was this. Well, again, they relate to giving away national security information or publicising national security sensitive information, but also potentially offences relating to places and the source of documentation as well. 
There's no clear evidence yet to suggest that any national security interest has been prejudiced in Australia. And what offences relating to places and the source of documentation as well means is entirely unclear to me. So what concerns me as much as anything else here, and the situation is much worse, uh, as has been mentioned in the United States, is the seemingly heedless and cavalier attitude being taken by senior political figures to the law, to the rule of law, to procedural fairness and to fair trial. From this political perspective, the law seems to be being seen as something to be plundered and manipulated in the interests of ensuring that a powerful critic is silenced. It should instead be regarded as the principal critical means of ensuring the fair and equal treatment of all, even those who upend the comfortable conduct of international diplomatic relations. And finally, there is no mention at all in political circles of what else is at stake here. Freedom of political expression, freedom of information, the freedom of the press, and the right of an individual to dissent. These are critical democratic values. We may be on the cusp of a formidable, formidable battle to protect them. Thank you.